We've all played games with hacking mechanics. Usually it's pretty bare bones. You walk up to a computer terminal, hold the X button for a couple of seconds, and then ding, the computer's hacked. Sometimes games go a little crazy with it. I mean, Batman Arkham Asylum had you tuning into a frequency with the thumbsticks. Uh, Bioshock had you playing Pipe Dream in order to rewire terminals. Uh, but usually the things that they come up with aren't very much like hacking, not in the real world. The closest thing I've seen to real hacking in a video game is Deus Ex when you're fishing around in people's wastebaskets for their passwords. Uh, but that's more like social engineering and not really like hacking. You think of hacking as the programming side of the experience. But there are a couple of new indie games that have really done a good job of trying to recreate the hacking experience. Hacking by the original definition, which is, you know, uh, ham-fistedly going through and trying to make code do what you want in the simplest and dirtiest way possible. The first one is Exapunks by Zaktronics. Uh, you play a hacker who's got some kind of horrible disease, you're trapped in your apartment, and you can only get the medication that you need uh, by performing these hacking jobs for a rogue AI. Um, let me show you one of the simpler uh, <laughs> problems that you have to solve. So this right here, the reason I'm showing you one of the simpler ones is because uh, this game gets extremely complex. And the problem with any game that's really about hacking is the fact that most of it goes on in your head you know you end up you know typing and selecting things you know there's actions that go on on the screen but most of the real action is you solving the problem silently in your mind i, I was thinking of trying to stream this game but there was just no way to make it interesting i mean most of it would just me be me sitting there staring at the screen pouring over these problems trying to solve them but uh, the way this works, basically, is that you've got uh, these little guys uh, called X's. Um, they're these, they look like robots. I think they're supposed to be like little, I don't know, drone programs that are infiltrating these networks for you. Uh, you send them into an enemy network. Uh, not really an enemy. Usually it's a, an innocent network that you're messing with. Um, you're sending it in to perform some job. Um, and the layout of the system could change. And you have, to, you have to set it up so that no matter what situation they encounter, your exes are able to get the job done. So in this case, my job is to come into this area, uh, find this file, and remove the word peanuts from it, wherever the word peanuts occurs. Uh, the story is that this is um, a snack factory, and as a practical joke, the AI wants to remove all the peanuts from their, you know, from their snack bars. So you can see here, if I look at file number 237, it's got peanuts here in the second position. But that's only in this iteration of it. The word peanuts can actually appear anywhere in the recipe. And so what I have to do is come up with a program that will send this little guy in here to grab this, find the word peanuts, and remove the word peanuts. So you can see the solution I've already got here. You know, he said it starts with grab 300. So he grabs 300, file 300 here, which only contains the word peanuts. He copies the contents of that file into his memory. Then he wipes the file, then he does link 800 twice. Link 800 means he jumps across the uh, little gap here that's labeled 800. So he jumps twice. Now he's sitting here with file 237. So he grabs file 237, and uh, we start a loop here. He tests to see if the, uh, the first item in the file matches what he's got in his memory. And if it does not match, then he tests the next one, and the next one, and the next one, until it finds one that matches. When he finds one that matches, he backs up a step to where he found it, voids it, you know, removes that entry from the file, and stops. So if we step through this, click the little step button here, we can see he grabs this file, he copies it, he destroys it, he hops two steps, he grabs 237, he reads Coco Mass. Is that the same as Peanuts? Nope. He reads Peanuts. Is that the same as Peanuts? Yes. Okay, let's go back, delete Peanuts, halt. And we've completed one iteration of it. And now we need to run through a hundred iterations to make sure that no matter what changes in that file, my little exa can still change it the way he needs to. And then once I succeed, it shows me a comparison with uh, all of my friends. Now, the, one of the reasons I'm showing this is because it's simple. The other reason is because I actually did pretty well uh, compared to my programmer buddies. This is unusual. Uh, the fact that I'm sitting here at the top, you know, with, with uh, one of the best scores in this section and in this section... In this one, everyone I know did better than me. I, so there's some key thing that I'm missing. I, there's something I did wrong here that they figured out that I didn't. But um, this is actually my historical uh, achievements. Right here, you can see 
This time, I actually only did it with uh, I did it with 31 cycles, which means that you know in order to complete the job, we had to take 31 steps through the process. Now, I've actually done better. I've done 29 steps before, uh, and I'll show you how I did that. So this is my first attempt, uh, where you know it is my original attempt where I just had one guy go in and do the job. But this one is called split load. This is I made two guys. One of them has the job of reading file 300, and the other one immediately starts jumping to file 237. The guy who reads file 300 copies it into their shared memory, the M slot here. And then this guy, instead of reading from his own memory, uh, he reads from the shared one. And so he's able to grab the word peanuts from his friend remotely rather than grabbing the word peanuts first before he even starts his journey. So this version takes only 29 cycles instead of 31. And, you know, it's a very subtle difference, but when I'm sitting here competing with all of my programmer friends, like, I, it's worth it to try to demonstrate that I can actually do okay at it. The problem is, let me show you some of these other, like, some of the later ones that I've done. Uh, let's look at this one, for instance, the highway sign. Uh, I don't remember exactly what it was, but yeah, so I did this at 125 cycles. Uh, my friend Jurgen did it in 89 cycles. I've got no idea how he did that. That's like far and away better than my job. Um, I did it with uh, 20 commands in my you know, files, in my uh, whatever programs. He did it in 10. Uh, and so did Nick. And so did Peter. So clearly, you know, I've got, I've got some learning to do. But the thing that makes Exapunks feel very legitimate to me is the fact that the people I know who did a lot better than me are programmers generally, or are some of them are designers with programmer backgrounds. Uh, but it makes me feel like, you know, if the years of study that these guys put into becoming programmers is helping them be better than me at this game, then it makes the game feel more legitimately like a programming challenge. I mean, and, you know, on top of that, I'm actually typing, you know, a fixed width font uh, into uh, a little robot guy, which, you know, that also makes it feel a lot like a hacking minigame. This is actually a particularly interesting uh, challenge where you have to copy illicit messages into streets, into road signs. So if you do it right, it'll re, uh, re letter each of these road signs to say things like fight the power and wake up sheeple. And this whole thing, like you have to not just, you're not just typing these things in, you have to automate a robot so that no matter what file you give it with what message, he can go in there and uh, you know and, and and apply it wherever it needs to be applied. So it's kind of fun. It's like instead of solving problems, you're creating entities that can solve problems, uh, which is really you know a lot of what what programming is about. So there you go. Miserably bad behind everybody else in the world. No idea what I'm doing. But that's one of the fun things about Zaktronics games is that they're built around these leaderboards where you know you can share your results with your friends, you can see what they did, or at least you can see how they did, and you can compare yourself against them and figure out where you need to improve. One game that actually avoids that a little bit is Seven Billion Humans by the Tomorrow Corporation. Now, Seven Billion Humans is actually a lot like Exapunks. They're both about programming little guys uh, to do what you want. In this case, let me grab this one here. Uh, you've got these little humans that are doing uh, the last jobs that are left in a completely robot-controlled economy, which is made-up jobs by robots um, who really don't have an idea of what humans like to do. So they're having humans move around pieces of data, which is what robots like to do. Um, so, But the difference between this and Exapunks is that in Exapunks, you can actually program each of your, exp uh, each of your exes separately to do their own little job. Whereas in this case, you have to write one program that tells all of the guys what to do. So this is a really good example of this. Each of these guys needs to run over, grab a data cube, and move it into the hole with the arrow by it. The problem is, for some of them, it's to the left, and for others of them, it's to the right. And if you run them in the wrong direction, they'll just fall to their death. So you have to write a program that checks to see which side of them their data cube is on. And if it's on one side, walk that direction. If it's on the other side, walk the other direction. And if you do it right, everybody goes and grabs their data cube and falls into the correct hole. Yay, congratulations. 
So instead of putting me on a leaderboard with all of my programmer friends to show me up, it just compares me to a standard. So it looks like I've met the speed challenge, but I haven't met the size challenge. There's, there's some way I could apparently do this with half the commands that I currently use. So if I wanted to put the time into figuring that out, I probably could. I don't think you want to watch me do that. So one of the differences between 7 billion humans and exapunks is the fact that exapunks does feel more like hacking, whereas 7 billion humans feels more like what's going on deep in the guts of a computer. Down there where really it just feels like math and logic and very simple things. And they make it interesting by having it be little humans walking around and falling into holes, which is kind of fun. But uh, to a programmer, it's actually a little bit less interesting. Uh, in fact, one of my uh, one of my programmer friends said that uh, the previous game in the series, Human Resource Machine, felt like I was a professional carpenter trying to whittle furniture using only a pocket knife, uh, which you know makes sense. He's used to having a very powerful language that lets him do a lot of very complex things, and the game was simulating the very simplest version of his job, which you know wasn't as interesting and satisfying because he already knew all that stuff. He had moved on to something new. For me, though, because programming is all new and wonderful and exciting, because I'm not a programmer as my day job, this is actually more my speed. It actually, you know, uh, it doesn't take advantage of a lot of the tips and tricks and uh, skills that programmers have built up over the course of their careers, and it just really boils it down to elementary stuff that someone who's brand new to the field, you know, can enjoy solving. So I'm thinking of calling this video Exapunks vs. 7 Billion Humans, but it's really not a competition for me. I'm glad both of these games exist. You know, I think that Exapunks feels a lot more like hacking, whereas 7 Billion Humans feels more like inventing a computer. But, you know, both of those expand my mind in new directions that really not a lot of other games even try to do. Um, the thing that I'm actually looking forward to is someday in the future, when somebody comes up with an immersive sim where the hacking mechanic is not just holding X in order to hack, or searching through a wastebasket, or playing a pipe dream minigame, but actually doing something like Exapunks, or like Human Resource Machine, which really does feel like programming. Because I can imagine that in such a game, uh, you know, the, the early people who beat the game would be the combat enthusiasts and the stealth enthusiasts and the people who like to, you know, play the conversation game, whatever that looks like. But I can imagine that towards the end of the game's life cycle, the real masters of the game are going to be the hackers, are going to be the people who figure out how to do things with the game that the developers never even imagined. You know, because that's kind of what hacking is all about. It's about taking something that somebody else created and then doing things with it that they never imagined. So this video is a little different from the ones I usually make, but if you like this format, please let me know in the comments, and then I'll just stare at you into your soul. <laughs>